from getting seen, bro. What do you got there, Carver? I don't know, a big box. <sighs> so, uh... Hey, firstly, what's up, guys? Steve here again. Carver, RC, RC tanks, tanks and, trucks. and trucks, NFG, a little bit of both. RC TNT, you know, rename it, whatever. Whatever. Anyway, so, uh, those of you who don't know me, I get married next year and get married in New Zealand. Sent my lovely little lady overseas for, you know, six, seven days over to Queenstown to do all the arranging. Um, while I stayed at home and worked. <laughs> worked on the keyboard and... Yeah, man, I got those fingers walking. Anyway, um, I went a little bit crazy. You did? Yeah. You <laughs> did? Yeah, yeah. I, uh... Which isn't... We, which is this is not abnormal for me. Anyway, so what do we have here? We have a Fib Racing Dragon Hammer Volts Roller. Now... Now, what's it similar to? Tell us why you wanted this one, then. Well, basically, it's like the, the retarded, ugly brother of the Vector 5. Yeah, or the Kraken. Or the Kraken, right? So, it's, it's basically a, a cheaper Chinese version of the Vector. Um, but, it does come out of the box, hopped up. Yeah. All the bells and whistles, everything you could possibly want. Um, but one issue that we did have with it is that it ships with a ZTW 300 amp Beast Pro. Um, unfortunately, which is, which is this guy. Let's go right here. And I have we have the video showing the Max Five. Max Five, this. this, and some few other ESC. So this is a, look, it's a Beastie ESC, 300 amp, 12 S capable, just. It can't do 12S in, in this. Why? Apparently it's too heavy. Um, I think, yeah, I think uh, over 25 kilos or something like that, the car, um, I think it's too much for the ESC. So um, we're in the midst of making a decision between, you know, some other little known brands out of China or maybe MGM. an MGM, maybe an MGM. Look, personally, the... Uh, you might have seen from some of my builds, maybe not so much the X Max, but the other stuff that I do. That I, I'm a, I'm a big lover of not over spending, and <laughs> getting what you want. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you can cut that out. That yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Now we're leaving that in. Anyway, let's get to the chase. No, I like getting, I like getting bang for buck. I've always been a bang for buck yeah. guy, right? Ten shock motors, hobby wing yeah. ESCs. Very good. You know. Um, Luke Ray, he's a brand, he's a brand, you know what, he's a brand, you know what, so, so anyway, so this get, is, this is my new baby, let's get the camera a bit closer, I haven't decided what I'm going to call it yet, but, alright, so let's go quick, quickly over the specs, well let's go, let's go over the specs, okay, so it's a, it's a four wheel drive, obviously four wheel reverse, uh, a lot of these electronics stuff doesn't really matter to us, no. because we're not running any of their electronics, uh, some of the stuff on the back here, solid rear axle design, so unlike the previous versions, and even the V2 um, gas version, mm -hmm. this comes with a complete CNC solid rear axle, like exactly the, the same as the Kraken. Yeah, just not as, yeah, just a bit different Just, just not Kraken. Yeah. Um, massive, massive battery bays. Yeah, like, that's really These good. are man-sized man -sized battery bays. <laughs> not like every other track where you're sitting there going, you've got a choice of two batteries because the battery, battery bays designed by some sort of Neanderthal. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, so large capacity shock absorbers. There's some more electronic stuff that doesn't matter to us Dual here. steering servos. Dual steering servos with a really unique uh, proprietary steering linkage system. Yep. It's really good. I like it. Um, For adjustments. You know, big massive wheelbase, massive tire track. Um, you know, it comes with some really cool mud terrain tires. It says it does 90 Ks at 8S. Um, it'll be doing at well over 100 k's on when we're, when we're 12 finished with it. But yeah, you can see this cool looking design here. But I think enough of the box. If we yeah. get sick of that, let's, uh, let's see where you get inside it. So it's a bit hard to film this because yeah, it's so this massive. Like, should, should we maybe just like uh, throw the box on the floor? And yeah, then... think, yeah let, let's do that. Yeah? <clears throat> Pretty big. Alright, so there we go. That makes it a bit easier. So as you can see, not like the Kraken, you have to put together, this is an RTR, or semi-RTR, well, you, you can get them almost ready to run, all you need is transmitter and receiver, yep. um, that comes with the uh, 300B stamps and a Leopard motor, from my understanding. Um, obviously, if you're happy with just running the 8S that the manufacturer has specified, then go for it. But uh, me personally, you know, uh, it's a big one-fifth scale car, 
should run on 12s. Yep. Big car should have big power and on eight. And we, can, and we, and we can't let Luke Gray beat us all the time. Yeah, no. Nah, that's nah. okay. Yeah. That's the main uh, reason why you know, I know the, this. the funniest thing would be is if I get this. At the moment, we're looking at a Flyer 400 amp. Yep. ESC. Little known. Yep, I know. Um, not a really well known brand, but definitely more than capable of pushing this car at this weight at 12s with my with my house batteries in it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, and if we go with that, it'll be the difference between a thousand, or what is it, 799 euros for an MGM? Yep. Versus 200, or 200 US dollars. For the flyer. For the flyer. Alright. So if we can get the flyer working in this, Bob's your uncle. But and, for, um, but for yeah. this video, let's just, what are we going to do? Going to put the ZTW we're just to get ZTW it running? In it. Um, unfortunately, well, actually, maybe. Luke, <laughs> we have to send him away. He has to go guy. back. One job. One job. He forgot one server. He forgot the server. Anyway. Anyway, um, so we'll un we'll unbox the rest of it. We'll show you what comes in it. We'll do a little bit of a once over of the shocks and so that kind of so stuff. Forth. Yep. And then by that stage, Lucre will be here, and I suppose we can throw some throw throw the the ZTW. We're going to run the NFG eight thousand milliamp hour batteries. And this bad boy. Um, unfortunately, that's a twelve S motor. I I'm not expecting it to do all that well on eight S. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit lacklustre. So this honest. is, yeah, because it's a 530kV. 530 530 so it's expecting a hell of a lot more current than what those... Um, <laughs> uh, Look at the size of this motor, hang on. <laughs> See, it's like your basic, what, 30... That's like an 8th eight, eight scale 3000, or a 10th scale 3000. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like a... Nearly a size of a Red Bull can, but anyway. Alright, that's enough fluffing around, let's, let's have a look. Open it up, let's have a look. Let's go. Let's blow this popsicle stand. All right, I'm pulling it out. So that's how it comes, pretty much. All right, so yeah, I've nice bead locked tires. Really interesting design. They actually use a five bolt stud pattern. Yeah, I do. And yeah, that I've five bolt stud that. pattern, um, uh, look, it could be good, could be bad. Obviously, yeah. it's going to take it a little longer to to, to to put the tire on and off. But the one thing I haven't thought about with it is. Um, you know, that one nut comes loose, wheel comes flying off. Yeah, this you lose one four. screw, you still got four well, screws like a real left. car, I guess. You know, like it's just less single points lock, of failure. they're pretty decent. Tire. Bead lock, pretty decent tyre. They're a very similar... They're pretty decent. They're a very actually. similar um, tread pattern to the Trepidors, yeah. the Maxi Trepidors. But um, anyway, let's get this guy out. Okay, obviously got four of those, that always helps. Oh, and there should be a fifth one, right, for the spare wheel, but that's yeah, getting... Yeah, but, um, yeah, Fid... Uh, Fid said that I have to make one more order before they send me one for free. <laughs> oh, well, you think I have to get one of these now? <laughs> Alright. So let's pull that bad boy out. You're a big boy. There we go. Look at that. Very nice. See? And like the Kraken series that's been going on for decades now. Well, it seems like it anyway. This one's already pretty much all done. Just got to put the wheels on, a couple of accessories, put the servos in, the ESC and the... Um, motor in this particular one you can get it even more ready to run but uh, yeah, it looks pretty sweet and I'll show you the uh, rig actually look at that the dragon hammer so that's what the DH is so that's dragon hammer and this type of car is actually a dragon hammer that's the real that's what they yeah. actually called it so obviously you just need to spray up the body we'll put the stickers on um, I'm not gonna sticker it I'm just gonna use the headlights and a few other bits and bobs I'm gonna get a a reverse sticker, any NFG sticker to stick on the front hood, and I'm going to yep. paint it black and red, like every other car I have. Very nice. So, and this is CNC'd aluminium uh, as well. 6061 aluminium. 6061. So, there we go. So, you know, the, your... for those of you who know your your metals, uh, 6061 is uh, very easy to work with. Not quite as strong as a 7075, but 6061 is. Um, a lot easier to machine. And it's not a solid. It's sorry, a solid rear axle, but it's it's an open diff. Yes. There we go, okay. So the Kraken, I can't remember what that was. That was open as well, from yeah. memory. But a solid rear axle, open differential. But, uh, alright, let's get uh, this body off and we'll step inside, have a look inside this body here. I'll turn the camera off and get a little bit more in better position and uh, see you soon. Now before um, we get any further, here is that unique setup with the stud patterns, the five studs. Pretty cool, though. Yeah. And everything looks very beefy, I must admit. Look at the size of these turnbuckles. Yep, 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 yep. Very yep. The, nice. the thing that I've, I've noticed, the first thing I noticed as soon as I pulled it out of the box is every screw is terminated with a nylock, nylock nut. Yeah, which is, it always helps. 
It would definitely. I'm, I'm, a fir, I'm a firm believer that a screw with a nut on the other end is always going to be better than a screw yeah. sunk into, into plastic. It doesn't matter how you look it's at it. It's got nice boots too. Stops ingress of dirt and dust, all that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. coming in. Yeah. You can see there, guys. Look yeah, at the size of that. They, they are some serious yeah, drive shafts. They're definitely huh? what? They look what? 10 mil? 10 mil? No, maybe. We'll check it out soon. I'll get the calipers out and have a look. How big were the Kraken ones? Are they about the same? Yeah. Well, I just measured them, so nine and a half, but uh, between friends, we'll call it ten. Nine and a half mil thick drive shafts. Pretty substantial. All right, now to take the body off. It's uh, two screws either side. Yep. And it has a little lip here that you need to kind of lift back so that it lifts off the mount oh, when you lift off. it. Pulls yeah, off. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, the other thing that I needed to, to mention was, <laughs> sorry, I digress, uh, two millimeter Lexan. Oh, yeah, it is Really thick. strong. Yeah, wow, okay. That is pretty decent. Yeah. So once you've taken the two screws from either side, there's just these two man-sized body clips at yep, the back here. They are huge. Um, you physically can't pull them out with your fingers unless you've got bare claws. Um, yeah, and then basically just lift. How about these ones? Hmm? No, trust me. Lift. Oh, there we go. So it hinges at the front. Right, there we go. So let me get behind. So let me get behind you there. Wow, there we go. Oh, okay, it's got a hinge mechanism at the front. Yeah, it's got a hinge mechanism, but you don't really want it to rest on it, no. right? So, pretty anemic I might, considering I might, the size I might, of I it. I might pull it out. How about we pull it? I'll hold that up for you, bud. That's pretty cool. Look at the size of that. Look at that. Look at that uh, machine. Goodness. And it's polished too, right? Yep. Except for the rear, obviously. Now, that's kind of like a unique that's their trait, I guess. Now, the Kraken's more angular and smooth. There we go. And that is that cool uh, raw machine look. There we go, that's pretty cool. And also we'll get the Kraken out later and we'll do a quick comparison between the two. Yeah, hopefully the, the weather in Sydney holds out a little bit and we, you know, we can do some little skids. Well, let's have a look now. Look but, at some of this. Yeah. Look at yeah. some of this. Uh... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's serious, it's dude. It's and it's so all nicely... Um, beveled, ed beveled, ed edge, yeah. beveled edges. Um, but look at the size of the centre chassis, dude. What you, what's that? Where's the caliper going now? I think that's what, five mil? Easy, dude. Easy. Maybe more. Yeah. Five. Five. Five mil thick. Five mil it's thick. It's got a nice uh, laser now, edge, um, edge there. Fits volts. Zero, one, one, one. Is that the actual... Is that how many... Is that the model number? Like the... Like I think the, it's the serial number. So you, you got model 111. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, and here we go. Look at the amount of... Um, Positions you got here. Yeah, look at the, this is what I was telling you the other day when we were talking no, about our little. Uh, that's 10 mil. It got to be. Well, no, that's more. That's it's like more. 12 mil. More. Sorry, guys. We're, we're just exploring it like you guys are. There's not a lot of literature. Yeah, man. 12 and a half. 12 and a half mil thick, and that's massive. Look how nicely polished and designed that is. That's CNC. Look at these. Look at these links. And the and the Completely difference with metal. this one is the crack, and this sits in here. The motor sits into this sock. So yeah, speak. it's got a kind of, it's got a guide, it's got a, it's a very specific uh, pattern for the motor. Basically it goes in there like that. This fits in there like that, that looks really cool, and this is like a cast aluminium. Yeah, oh, I don't know if it's cast. Yeah, probably it cast. cast, it looks yep. cast. Yeah. Um, obviously you take the four bolts out of there and that exposes the spur for the differential, which obviously sits in this house. Yeah, we'll, we'll show them soon in a second. Yeah, but we'll obviously, yeah. Look at all it. this. It does look really nice. I'm very impressed, dude. That looks five, five mil, thereabouts. But I really, it's got sway bars. Yep. Front and front and rear. rear. Yep. S similar to the Kraken. Yeah, this is pretty cool. No. Nah. nah. Wow. Oh. Seven mil, seven, mil. seven point three mil. But this is is it uh, the hub again? That's cool. I have never seen that. But guys on the internet, let us know. Surely someone's seen it before. Someone has this already, obviously. Let us know about the weak points, the good points, what needs to be upgraded, if there is anything. Um, but yeah, let us know. Look at that. That's a kind of cool little plate that holds a sway bar there, not just mm. a standard piece. I like the, they've got nice little touches. Nice finishings. And a huge droop ass screws. droop screws, yep. And the steering or servo saver there as well. It is massive. That's And huge, the good man. thing is, and they thought ahead, right? Biggest problem with a servo saver, nine times out of ten, is going to be that it's metal or metal, or it's plastic and plastic. So either one end stresses and then breaks, yep. or they don't move at all because they they're metal. Yep. Um, notice how they've used an aluminium uh, bell crank shoe, 
plus a plastic top, yeah, which yeah. means one's going to give. Yep. Right. Um, going to save your servos. It's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. Flip it around for us. Oh, so let's have a look at the bottom. Oh, there we go. So that's like a that's like a champagne colour. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That goes straight through. Breaks for the window. Sorry. Steve. Yeah. Look at the look at the bottom of that. That's cool. That's really cool. So they got. Polished on one side and the raw kind of machined. I wonder why they did that. Do you think know, there's something for just strength? Just for looks? I don't know. I think well, it's just, just maybe looks. just for looks. Maybe. That looks really cool. Now, the one thing I haven't checked yet is to see all of these, these screws that are going, you know, so this one here is bolting into the bottom of the diff, diff housing. I want to pull that out and see if it's got any Loctite on. Yeah. Because one of the biggest complaints people have of cars manufactured out of Shenzhen, which is the place where most of your, most of your Chinese... Um, well, OEM, OEM, pretty OEM much all cars, cars, cars from. Even, you know, Traxxas and Armour and all the rest of them are getting manufactured over there these days. So, uh, one of the biggest gripes people have is uh, the lack of consistency with Loctite. Yep, so we'll definitely be um, using uh, blue or red. Red's, red red where it uh, doesn't red, never want to come off. Red where I never need to pull it off again, and blue anywhere else. But even then, red, you know, if you put... You, all you need is a couple of ugga-duggers. <laughs> dugga, 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 dugga. Yeah, wait, 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 let's, yeah, let's yeah. have a look at the design of it. Here's a lower A-arms here, and they seem... They have a lot, they've got a nice flex to them, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is what yeah. you want. Yeah. Everything looks There's really aluminium juicy. upgrades for them, but you know, oh, I, I, I'm yeah. a firm believer of lower A-arms need to be plastic. Yep. Wow. Okay, cool. So, first step, what do you want to do? Um, put it together. Let's do Let's do that. Let's get... Uh, see you in a sec. Now, before we forget, because I know I will, here's the battery trays, and we've got a ruler here to show you the, how big they actually are. So, the internal measurements... I can tell you that length is 190. 190 millimetres internally, yep. and what's the width? Width is 75. 75. Uh, this is an NFG 8004S battery. Mm -hmm. It's a big battery. They are big. This completely fills an X-Max battery bay. Well, they're pretty much made for the X-Max. Well, they're, they're, yeah. that's exactly what they're made for. You want to uh, leave the link in the description for that. We'll go check out our NFG page. But as you can see, the lengthwise is perfect. Lengthwise is perfect. Now, this, these are not the batteries I'm going to run. No. Um, in the battery video, we showed you a really big 6S10,000. Yep. They fit in here like a frog in a sock. Awesome. Or something else in a sock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at that. Just a small... Sorry. I keep getting um, blown away. It's nice small details here. Massive yeah, coilover shocks. They're yeah, huge. And they do... The dampening does seem pretty good. They seem similar to the Kraken when we put that together. They're pretty I really like these limiting... Look, aluminium... CNC aluminium limiting bars. Yeah, that's really cool. And yeah, this is... This is like the stock one, isn't it? This is like... Is this not the upgraded version, or this is actually... No, this is... This is it. This is... V2 volts. This, this is, is what comes. you get. This is what, and that's what, pretty impressive. What you see is what you get. The only difference is, is I got the roller because I don't want to run their electronics. Yeah, no, it's fine. Because I want 12S. Done. Okay. Let's get back right. to it. Okay, first we're going to put the uh, motor in the air scene, but uh, it come, also comes with this little accessories box. Obviously, I've already been in here and had a look at a few things, but these are the servo... Servo mounts. Servo mounts. Yep. Really nice. Um, they look like that. Yep. Um, nice little... Uh, Oh, it comes with that. Yeah, that's really oh, that's nice. It's always handy. Yep. So two Y splitters. Yep. Obviously, because you're going to be using one for the servo and potentially one for something else. Yep. Disc brakes. Which it doesn't have. Uh, uh, so roller yeah, on that. Unfortunately, um, the Dragon Hammer gas disc brakes don't go with this car. So they're in the middle of designing them. Look, this thing is so kind of like Kickstarter-esque. Um, they haven't even got a manual yet. They don't okay. have a manual, they don't have, it, they don't have anything. So it's, not, have really, have it's not really for the beginner RC. Uh, if you are getting into RC and you're not 100% comfortable stripping down and putting back together an RC car without even having a manual yeah. or something to refer to, you don't know, um, using calipers to measure screw lengths and stuff like that, you need to be careful with these sorts of things. So, yeah, don't bother with this until such time as there's some actual consumer support. Which will it. be soon. Which so we'll be upgrading the disc brake later on. But anyway, So, some Y splitters, a screwdriver, a whole bunch of screws. These are for the motor can. Yep. Uh, Big 20 tooth pinion, so there's a 61 tooth spur in there yeah, with a 20 that tooth pinion. Who is that powdered uh, metal? 
Okay. Oh, and there's that, uh, you were saying you like that uh, oh, yeah. so dual steering. Oh, yeah. So this is the dual steering linkage. Now, the one thing that caught my eye about this, and, and I read it on, on one of their pages that it's uh, they're pack, trying to patent it, it's a dual servo, but with an adjustable servo spline. Oh, okay. So, you know, usually when you put two servos in, there's a lot of, there's a lot of effort required to get the... No buzzing. The, the buzzing away, or to not have the servos yeah. fighting each it other. It takes well, a little you, bit of time, You just yeah. back off these four screws, and it allows you to rotate the servo spline within the actual... Uh, within the actual... What's that? Kind of like a servo crank? Yeah. Servo... Yeah, well, the more. servo's on there, you can put mm -hmm. it back on. Yeah, That's pretty so, cool. Yeah. Very nice, and that looks really nice. Nice yeah, machined. All, everything looks all, really cool. Everything's all machined. Nicely really. polished, so... So obviously, same as with every one of my cars, we'll be using Fataba. Um, and I can't imagine there's anything else here that I need to do. No, nope. let's put the motor in. Okay, so we took the center plate off, and there was no Loctite. Well, not the, the normal blue ones or red one we can see. I don't think there's any Loctite. See? I'm, I've looked at most of the screws that have come out now. And I... So all these ones we're going to be putting back, and we're definitely putting Loctite on there. So we took the center, center well, brace off, which attaches to here. Now we need to get this whole section, this motor mount which is a nice transfer case which look at that how nice and chunky that is down there so we'll definitely check out the grease as well we've got some marine grease we can put in there the dynamite marine grease would be perfect for this yep. um, now we've just got to figure out what else to take away to get so in there get, get in there so there's a chunky massively thick so I think I might have to use a the rattling gun for that one always going to make sure when you use these guns obviously be careful hold it nice and straight and push down nice and hard there we go So to get to this actual motor housing, these ones have a Loctite on there. Do they? Uh, maybe not, I don't know. Another battery there for it, yeah. but there we go. So yep, to get to the motor mount, take that off, move all this out and then... Uh, yeah, we're, we're learning at the same time guys, like I mentioned there's no, um, there's no manual. manual man. So yeah, it's fun real. and games. We all know about as much as each other. Okay. So, obviously because we're new about this. And there's no, there's no literature, but it took us a while to work out what comes off from where but and in why. The, it, it's but in the scheme of things, long. so simple. It's basically four screws in the bottom of the... And that's keyed massively. See this huge ass key? Yeah. Which is... Mates up to that down there. So that's a key, so that stays in the centre. Mm -hmm. And basically it gets wedged in between all these... Uh, this all top these plate top here. plate and everything else. So spin it around here. It, it, uh, it sits on top of those two is there. So you gotta make you gotta undo that stuff and once it's done you lift that up and you just pry that out. Yeah. And it's ready to go. So But wow look at that. It's huge hey. So we need to separate these two plates. Yeah. And so get inside another, there. another two screws and let's have a look. I don't I'm not gonna bother always filming undoing everything because some people don't really like it. But we'll leave it for this. It's only four screws. And we can see as it opens, what grease is in there? It's definitely marine grease. I can see it. It's red. Okay. Or some really good molly. One of the two. Feels good. Okay. Here we go. Moment of truth. Ah. 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 Has it got a... In the middle? No. No. Nothing in there to... Pull it out. Maybe just pressure fit in there. That you have to pull out first. Yep. Mm. Back in a sec. <laughs> okay, we had to release this other what, no, part of that uh, axle. Not axle. What's that called again? Uh, that's, that, that's transfer case. Transfer whatever. case. So there we go. Inside it, we have looks like red marine grease. Yep. So at least it's there. It's not spread anywhere because there's no opinion attached to it, obviously. But it does, it does come with it from factory. And there's enough there too. And here is the other side of that transfer case. Two huge bearings, and that's also two huge bearings, nice and uh, rubber sealed. Yep. And there's the other obviously, side of it too, as well. The other side, obviously. Uh, um, there's a pin for that. I don't know which way this goes now. That's you can see but on the other side. But there, there's a pin, for example. That's all it is. So we got to get the pinion all meshed up and ready to go. So obviously this is a bit of a process but you don't need to do this all the time because this is just what you need to do to actually get the motor in there. Once it's in there, it's in. Cover, is it all good? Looks good to me man, looks centered on the plate. 
nice juicy so all we need to do is put the now there's no mashing with this you just put the pin on because there is it's just pre pre meshed you could say right yeah i'm fairly certain it, it's only going to go bam and there's no you can't you can't actually mash it so we'll put it together and make sure it's right but it can only it can only comes with this pinion right yeah that's all it is yeah so we'll put it all back together there's not much else to it don't want to waste too much Where'd time the yeah Right there in the box. Now one thing I noticed that uh, that pinion is actually key so no more slipping on the shaft which is pretty cool. No one likes a slipping shaft. No. no. Yes. Uh, but the only difficult thing is trying to figure out the distance to mate perfectly in line with the pinion and spur. But that's alright. You've got to put the casings together and see how they look. But that's it. Ready to go. We'll make sure there's enough oil on there. We'll put red Loctite on everything and this motor's not coming out again and that pinion is staying there for good. So, lock everything up and we'll put this uh, whole Motor mount, transfer case, all back together, and then the servos. Look at that <laughs> behemoth. Ready to go. Complete transfer case. Blue Loctite, everything. No binding, everything feels nice. All blue or red Loctite, where, depending on what, what we wanted and where we needed it. Now to put it back in. Now to put it back in, we're just going to lift this just a little bit. Slide the, the motor shaft underneath. And like, it's, like we said, we won't need to do this again. Well, yeah, not for the motor anyway. The motor's staying. The SC is the only thing that'll get yeah, changed out. That's easy. Kind of shimmy that in there. Uh, I have to release it. Oh, okay. A little clamp. So we'll put that back in there and uh, see how it goes. Look who's back. Oh, we haven't seen you yet, Luke Ray. Someone forgot the servos. Okay, Carbo. Hey, Luke Ray. Hey! Hey! hey. hey. Okay, uh, well, again. Okay, um, it took us a little bit of time, we worked it all out, but uh, as it actually turns out, there's actually not that many screws needed to actually pull apart the rear from the front assembly. So, one, two, three, and then the three on the other side as well, and then four screws that hold this transfer case in place. Um, as you can see on the bottom, let me just get it over for you. There's a bunch of tracks. There's a massive key that aligns oh the bottom of the transfer wee. case into the chassis. So that nothing's moving there, right? Um, which is good, it's what you want. So now we're just gonna mount this battery tray back in. Uh, it's just six screws, and Bob's your uncle's fanny your aunt. It's the first time I've seen it. Yes. It is the first time you've seen it, isn't it? I'm happy with my procurement. All right, Caro, what do you got there? I like, like, nice little shiny things. So what do you got there? How much is These that? are just the servo ears, Lucre, but yeah, they have nice little, uh, nice little sheaths for the cap head screws to go in, to sit in. Oh, Lucre. Like that. Whoa, that's one we prepared earlier. That's good. That's nice. Yeah, they do look good. Uh, that's one of the things that we've noticed. Each oh, one of us have noticed throughout this build so far, or throughout, so you know, having a look. Touches. It's the little touches, man. They're, like it's, it's, it's very well finished. Even the fans. They, yeah, the, I like that idea too. Only one pushes and one pulls, or they both just. Pull no, they both push. That is all oh, right. They would both push. Can you give us a goose of that uh, servo horn. Yeah, we'll, we'll show that's that another piece that I really like. Looks nice. Shiny. Pretty good, eh? So, Carbo, we'll finish these little mounts. We'll put it in and we'll see how it looks. What uh, surveys are we going? Oh, yeah. Well, I, we went with these because this is what I had at home. So, we just bought a second one. Uh, they're relatively. Savox SW0241MG. So, there's a 0240 and a 0241. The 241 is the torque model. Which is what you're going to want for a heavier car. What are these torques on this? Um, they're 40 kilos. So they recommend 7.4. 7 so that'd be 80 well, together, basically. So that's well above their spec. Yeah. No, well, well, they recommend 70. Yeah. They come with factory with 140. Yeah. And I've just ordered 240 servos. So I'll have 200. <laughs> I'll have 280. 280 kilo. Oh, look at this. Look great. Nice uh, touches here on the. It's a small, small finishings there. Without what's that? It's uh, like a screw up, seat. Yeah, like a screw seat surrounding the uh, cap head of the uh, screw. Looks pretty good. It's the little things they get us. Little. Oh, that like servo it. horn is. That's nice. So that just goes like that, and obviously that's just going to go like this. That's all it is. So we'll make sure the make. servers are centered, attach them all. But that is that setup. I do really like that. Uh, cool. That's oh, nice. It is. Looks good. And the servo. And they came with it, did it? Savox 0241MG, so they're 40 kilo servos, 
uh, metal geared, high voltage. Um, I really like that setup too. There's no mixing. You don't have to play around with any of the endpoints. And yeah, we, we showed this little setup before how you can adjust this. It's got a proprietary. What's well, their own? It's style. a proprietary yeah. system. There's no other car manufacturer that no produces way. an adjustable servo horn. Pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah it's and really, I was, really I was really saying, awesome. saying these too. The fans. That's a good idea too. Yeah, it's piggyback, having piggyback one on fans. The, one on the motor. You've got two here. That. Uh, what are they both? Sorry. No, they're both pushing. Both pushing. So, that's so in. They Inwards. come with it, eh? Yeah, they come. That's it. All right, so let's put these in. Get so everything buttoned up, and then got a little uh, got a little wire splitter here. But as you can see here, this 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 ingenious design so here. By so these these are locked in in the center like a normal servo horn. But now these four bolts they um, are loose. they allow the the collar of the servo horn to move, which means you can free up binding or, mm. or, or fighting between the servos. Yeah, it's very um, cool. So you just got to make sure these are straight. Your wheels are straight. Thereabouts, you can always do the trim later. Yeah. But the main thing is the servos aren't fighting each other, so you lock yep. them away. We'll turn it all on, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Next Very up, uh, all, we did, all we did here, we took off this side battery tray, so it's just easier to get to. And the servos, two servos are lying down and secured with two uh, countersunk screws at the bottom. Massive ones, too, by the way. Let me get out of the way so I can see it. There we go. See now, once they're all down, they bite, and that's it. We'll probably put some locks on that later on. Whoops, whoops, there we go. Done. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And that's a nice setup, actually. It's very nice and clean. I like that. Yeah. Really cool. All right, next step, put the battery tray back on, and then... And then we're looking, and then it's time to put... The ESC on. This bad boy. Carbo, the one benefit of this being a ZTW ready machine is the ZTW mounts straight onto the ESC mounting plate. It's got no two more. screws at the bottom. No 3D mounted. Or no lock. X5 mounts. No cable ties, hot glue, and that just moves on in just like that. Simple as that. Look at that setup. That looks sick. Enough room for the batteries, or the wires. Everything looks sweet. Look at that. That looks cool. It just looks mean. It just looks like it's meant. Me all meant to sit there. I like it when things can be built and then done and then they're neat. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you guys with attaching everything, all these no, no. wires, all the batteries, all that. We'll get everything set up. All right. Happy man. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, every, everything, everything that we went through in this, every time we did something, we found something more that we liked. It's really good. It really is. So servos all buttoned in there, uh, just a two channel for Tarbus, surface receiver. receiver. Yep, receiver. Um, yeah, sorry, receiver. I said receiver, didn't I? Yeah, Servo. Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> same thing. Uh, same thing. Uh, you got the program wire there, so don't pull wire. all that apart, which is nice. Huge ass ESC, it's got the two screws at the bottom holding it in there. Everything, obviously, well, it's meant, it comes out, I think, ready to run with this particular ESC, so that's why it fits so nice. So everything looks really good. We'll Double check everything works, we'll plug it in later on. Next we'll put the uh, wheels and tyres on and then we should be ready to rock and roll. Everything's on the ground, lifted up, we checked everything before we turned it all on. Did the calibration, endpoints, there's still a couple of other little things that need to be done. Um, we'll need to set the becks so that they're providing the right amount of voltage to the two servos. That looks awesome. But um, yeah. Alright, charge the servos, everything works well. They're not the strongest servos in the world, but they'll do for now. They'll do for the meantime. So next thing, we'll put the body on. That's Kraken, the difference now. Vectify, there is a see. slight difference, um, but generally it's the same design as you can see. Look at that articulation. That looks sweet. And that's two Proton X-Max tyres underneath there to give you a bit of an indication how high that is. But you can see the difference in the uh, finishes there. What else can you notice, boys? Just on the top of your head. The cage yeah. definitely looks different. The, the cage on the on, on mine, I think, is actually thicker, thicker yeah. and beefier. Yeah. Um, Got more support. Yeah, it's you can definitely and see the that back. there's a lot more nylon in this plastic than there is in yours, just by the shininess. Yeah. Right. Um, not to mention um, the, the the biggest thing that I noticed straight away is the difference in the wheel pattern. Yeah. Um, Mine is a, a little bit lower and a little bit wider. Yours is a little bit higher. Oh, you mean actual 
we'll move these tyres, it'll give you a better look. Yeah, have we got, um, have we got something to measure the width? Let's have a look. Yeah, hold on, I've got a tape measure. Tape there we go, so we can see the, yeah, let me just see to get the front of these, but, uh, definitely, yeah, your, you can tell that your one is very low slung compared yeah. to, that's why it might but be a bit deceiving. the A-arms are the same, right? Look at yeah. the, the height and the, like, where the A-arms are sitting. It's just that mine is a... a different design A-arms, too. I Look at that compared to that. Design body. Right. Everything, is, everything lines up as far yeah. as, like, uh... But even the front bumper, yours is like this. Whereas that one's got, like, integrated uh, lights. And you can see the A-arms as well. The A-arm designs are completely different. Hub design, the carrier designs are fairly similar. Yep. Mind you, there's not a lot of difference between the carriers. And as far as roller prices, they're roughly, uh, you know, a bit better this, bit of that. They're not a very... No, there's... there's know, they're not a, twice as much. Yeah, you know, it's not like the Dragon yeah. Hammer is a considerably cheaper car yeah, than the... The same wheelbase too. Same wheelbase. Yep. So we go there, so... <coughs> Maybe a little bit longer on the thing? No. no oh, the body, oh, the plastic body. The plastic yeah. body sticks out a little Your bit Your body further, sticks out an inch or so. Are, but oh, sorry, the width of the axle. Yeah, yeah very cool. So, so hang on, let's, uh, let's have a look. Let's do a bit of comparison. What we've got two here, you know, they haven't seen this many on the internet. I've actually seen very little. Your uh, tyres look thick, wider. Oh, they are much wider. This is the V2 wider. Dragon Hammer tyre. Um, one of the MX43. And there's an MX43 just for comparison. So one of the things that this style of car um, is n one of, one of the drawbacks of this style of car and what they're known to do is uh, grip roll or traction mm. roll. Um, apparently the thicker and also the cut in. See how they've cut in on the edge of the tire. Yep. Because it's not so sharp, it's less likely to dig in a divot in the dirt and then cause it to. Um, one thing we'll find out. Yeah. One thing that uh, the Kraken has is you can adjust the camber the cambers. on a solitary rack, so I don't know if this still has that same setup. I don't, I, I don't so. know if it was unique to the Kraken, that's a difference with that, but uh, apart from that... But they're both at zero. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sweet. Alright guys, so, uh, Dragon Hammer build, four hours, Vector build, Six and a half months and, and still, still not going. <laughs> we wanted to run them together, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so next video, you definitely see the uh, dragon hammer out. Yeah, the dragon hammer. Look, she's ready to go now, mate. Um, but this guy has to go to work. <laughs> we have, we do have to work to pay for these things. Yeah, we work. Yeah, yeah. I run a business. business. He runs a business. business. He's an analyst. He anal ah. stuff. Uh, anyway, so next video we'll get that out and hopefully we can run them together. Mate, that would be the thing, right? To see two dragon hammers hammering it across some dirt. We're going to find a really nice dirt area to do it on. Take it to the skate park. <laughs> why not, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. No, we won't Actually, do you know what? We'll take your Swift to the skate park. <laughs> Done. Alright. Small That's enough. It. Otherwise, we'll do a running video. We'll do it long as well. So, alright. Yeah, this has been a long enough video already, guys. So, look, looking forward to showing you what these two beasts can do. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Any questions, leave them down below. And please subscribe if you haven't. See you guys.